Hey everyone, recently one of our subscribers Prashant Rai cracked Java developer interview at NTT Data. He is having total 3.8 years of experience and got an interview call from Nokri. Okay, guys, if you want to share your interview experience, and please fill the form below in the description. In this video, I am gonna share his technical interview questions with explanation what he shared with me. Okay, and also please make sure to subscribe to see such real interview experiences. So now let's get started. So after introduction and project discussion, interviewer first asks if a method has both try catch and finally and try block returns a value which values is finally returned. So if a try block returns a value, the finally block still executes before returning. The value from the try block is returned unless the finally block catches it or throws another exception. Okay. Then interviewer asks the different ways to create an object in Java. This is very common and very important question, guys. So we can create an object in Java by using new keyword reflection, deserialization or using factory methods. The most common and simple way is using the new keyword as we already know, right? Then interviewer asks what happens if a class doesn't have a default constructor. So this is a tricky question. So if a class doesn't have a default constructor and you try to create an object without parameters, Java throws a compile time error. You must define a constructor that matches the parameters you are using. Okay. Then interviewer asks to explain the class loading process in Java. So the class loading process has three steps, loading, linking, initialization. The class loader loads a class, verifies and prepares it, then runs static blocks and initializes static variables before the class is used. Okay. Then they ask, can a class be loaded twice? This is also a very important question. A class can't be loaded twice by the same class loader, but it can be loaded by different class loaders. Each class loader keeps its own copy, which is why the same class name can exist multiple times in the memory. Then he asks, what happens if you start a thread twice? So this is also very common and very important question. So if you start a thread twice by using start method, Java throws an illegal thread state exception. A thread can only be started only once. Remember this. After it finishes, it cannot be restarted or reused again. Then they ask what's output of calling run instead of start. So if you call run method directly instead of start, it runs like a normal method in the same thread, not in the new one. So new thread is created or started. Then interviewer asks, how does Java handle memory leaks even though it has garbage collection? This is also a very important question. So Java's garbage collector removes only objects that have no references. If objects are still referenced but unused, the GC won't remove them. This causes memory leaks even though GC is running very properly. Then they ask, how does a hash set ensure uniqueness internally? So hash set ensures uniqueness by using a hash map internally. It stores each element as a key and before adding it checks if the same hash and equals values already exist preventing duplicates okay then he asks what happens if you don't override hash code properly so if you don't override hash code properly objects that are equal may different hashes causing duplicates insets or wrong lookups in maps it actually breaks the equal hash code contract and makes collections behave unpredictably okay then interviewer asks to difference between array list and copy on array list. So array list is not a thread safe. This is the first thing means multiple threads can corrupt data if they modify it together. Copy on array list is thread safe. It makes a new copy of the list whenever it's modified and allowing safe concurrent reads. Before moving ahead, guys, I would like to share one important thing with you. We had launched complete interview preparation kit. So let me tell you this interview preparation kit has four main parts. First is complete interview preparation material. It is a step by step material made by me, expert and MNC's interviews. 99% of the questions asked in the interviews are covered in it. Second is two real enterprise client projects code and video recorded sessions are there and you can add this in your resume. Third is lifetime chat support. Here you can ask your doubts anytime. Fourth is referral support. Here we help you get referred to the top MNCs. Okay. So basically this material is organized as per your experience level and covers Java, Spring Boot, Spring Security, Spring Data, JPA, Kafka, Microservices, Maven Gate coding questions, Tree BPA coding questions and many more. You can buy just a complete interview preparation material all the full kit with project support and referrals. I have added the links in the below description. So now moving to our interview experience. Guys, an interviewer asked when would you prefer copy on write array list? So use copy on write array list when our application has many reads and few writes like in caches or listener list it's a great for thread safety without locking but not ideal when updates happens very often 
then they ask what's the difference between fail false and fail safe iterator so fail false iterators throw concurrent modification exception if collection is changed while iterating whereas fail safe iterators don't throw errors because they work on a copy of the collection so changes don't affect iterations then he asks which collections are fail safe so fail safe collections are concurrent hash map copy on right array list and copy on right array set then they are used in multi-threaded environments where safe iterators is needed even when other threads modify the collection at the same time okay then they ask how would you return a value from a thread so to get a return value from a thread we should use callable with executor service submit the task using the submit and get the result using future.get which waits for the threads to finish and return its output guys an interviewer asks how does thread pool executor manage threads internally so thread pool executor keeps a pool of a reusable threads when a task comes it uses an idle threads or creates one finished threads go back to the pool saving time and avoiding frequent threads creation then he asks what happens if all threads are busy so if all threads are busy new task waits in the queue until a threads becomes free if the queue is full to the thread pool executor may reject a new task or throw a rejected execution exception okay then he asks suppose you have a hundred tasks but only 10 threads available how will you execute all efficiently so use a thread pool executor or executor service with a fixed thread pool of 10 threads it runs 10 tasks at a time as and as soon as one finishes the next task from the queue starts automatically then they ask what is volatile keyword and how it is different from the synchronized so the volatile keyword keyword ensures that changes to a variable are always visible to all threads unlike synchronize it doesn't lock the code it just prevents threads from using the cached values keeping data fresh but not atomic okay then interviewer asks explain the completable future class and gives a real world use case so completable future allows writing asynchronous non-blocking code it basically runs tasks in the background and combines result easily for example it can fetch data from multiple apis at once and merge responses without blocking the main thread okay guys an interviewer asks what happens behind the scenes when a spring boot app starts so this is very important question so when a spring boot app starts, it runs a main method it creates a spring boot application instance it sets up the application context it scans for components application auto configurations and finally starts embedded servers like tomcat or jetty okay then he asks how does auto configuration work in tunnel this is also a very important question so auto configuration works using the enable auto configuration on annotation spring checks the class path loads matching configuration classes from meta spring factories like spring dot factories and automatically sets up bean okay and it is based on available dependencies and defined properties okay then interviewer asks what are spring boot starters and how do they simplify configuration so spring boot starters are pre-made dependency bundles like spring boot starter web it include all required libraries for a feature they simplify setup by avoiding manual dependency management and letting us start projects very quickly with minimal configuration then they ask what's the difference between bean and component so component is used to mark a class for automatic detection during component scanning whereas bean is used inside a configuration class to manually define and return a bean both creates beans but in different ways then interviewer asks if you declare both for the same class which one takes precedence so if both component and bean defines the same bean the bean method takes precedence because it is explicitly defined in a configuration class overriding the automatically detected component bean okay then they ask how does spring manage dependency injection at compile time or runtime so spring manages dependency injection at runtime not at compile time it creates and injects bean dynamically when the application context is started based on annotations configurations and dependency rules defined in the application okay then they ask to explain how to secure a REST API in a Spring Boot. So we should use a Spring Security to protect endpoints. It enables HTTPs, authenticate requests, validate inputs, set codes, rules, rate limits, log audits, encrypt sensitive data and apply consistent exception handling. It tests and updates the dependencies regularly for security patches and monitoring tools. Okay. 
then interviewer asks how would you implement role based access important questions so define roles and authorities stores them in a database for identify provider map to users and use spring securities as pre authorized annotation method security or url based rules to restrict endpoints we should check the roles in filters written 40344 done and audit access periodically and forced okay then guys he asked coding question first was implementation your own singleton class and that should be thread safe and then asked to implement an lru cache using linked hash map uh, you will find the solution of these on google so guys this is all about ntt data technical interview experience please make sure to subscribe and check interview question kit below thank you bye bye